Hey, it's the Fish Guy reporting to you from the studio at Something Fishy with the latest news from Fish Guy TV. Today I'm excited to introduce a new training segment for both our retail customers and our team as well. Both be our existing team and also the new team that joined us as the company continues to grow. We've put a lot of our training and all the important things in setting up, designing, and installing an aquarium onto video in short segments so that you can get things done right and done right the first time. Hey, it's the fish guy with something fishy. And Sean, the science guy with something fishy. So today we're gonna to talk about RODI units, also known as reverse osmosis units. And that's what we have here. So why do you need this crazy thing for your fish tank? Well, first of all, it's not for your fish tank. It's actually for your tap water supply from your home or your, your business. It's gonna take your tap water that while you may think tastes wonderful and is great for you to drink, that might be true, but there could be a lot of things in there that aren't helpful or, or could be harmful to your fish. And typically what we refer to those as is total dissolved solids that may exist in your tap water. The total dissolved solids are typically gonna consist of metals and could be some chlorine and different items that you definitely don't wanna get into your fish tank. So, we use the RODI unit to purify your tap water, collect it in a containment system, then we add salt to it to then uh, do, perform your water change or fill up your fish tank. And you have to remember too, something that's very important is this takes fresh water and purifies it. If you were to take that fresh water and, and have it for a freshwater fish tank, your fish probably won't live because the water is so pure, it lacks a mineral content that's needed to, for even freshwater fish to survive. So if for some reason you're using this unit on a freshwater system, make sure that you add the mineral content back. On a saltwater system, that mineral content is added back when you put salt in the water. So Sean, how do we use this crazy looking thing and maintain it? Well, typically a unit like this is uh, going to have a few things uh, coming in and out of it. You've got your incoming water supply where your water's coming off your tap. You have your waste water line that goes to the drain. And you have your product water line which would go to a container that you would store this water. Uh, so so my, the tap water comes into this, this canister right here, right? Correct. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. And from there it goes through a one micron sediment filter which basically takes all the big coarse chunks out of the water and if changed regularly will save the filters downstream uh, in the rest of the unit. So from there water goes into your carbon filter which is a one micron carbon filter and that is going to pull out a lot of the chlorines and toxins that are in the water that are kind of critical to get out of there. So how did the water get from this canister into the second canister? There's a, a small little connection inside here that uh, connects the two units. Oh yeah, they're connected right here. Not all the units that are out on the market are built like this, but the water will flow from one to the other one. So from there, the water is going to go up into our reverse osmosis membrane, which this is the primary uh, filtration component of this entire system. This is really what gets out the, the bulk of the toxins and the waste in the water that we're really trying to eliminate and make the water healthy for our fish. Um, so water basically enters one side, and this is where the water is rejected on our wastewater line. So wait a second, the water comes in over here? Yes. So it goes in over there after it's gone through your charcoal chamber and carbon, and carbon filter, and then it comes out on this side over here? Yep, comes out this blue, pro blue product line. Um, the reject water, or the wastewater, for every one gallon of good water that this unit makes, it rejects three gallons of wastewater, and that's just part of the purification process. This water you're going to want to run to a waste line or a drain line and, and get it out of, out of the house basically. Your product water is going to go towards uh, a storage container where you're going to store and maintain it uh, and basically be able to like, use that water to mix up salt for your fish tank. That's great. Out of the, the, the product water actually goes through this last chamber uh, before it makes it to your, your, your containment bin and that is a deionization filter right here. This is going to really polish and purify the water, make it nice and extra clean for your fish. So say I don't have a, a DI unit, I just do three stages. I just take the sediment out, I take the chlorine out through your, my carbon block, I put water through my membrane. Why, does it, why do I need the DI? Well, it really depends on your water quality coming out of your tap. I and mean, everybody's tap water is a little bit different. You can get units that have five, seven, ten stages, or you can get units that are small, two or three stages. The small units, what you're talking about, a strictly reverse osmosis, 
Well, osmosis unit without a deionization filter it is common. You know, if you're gonna purchase a unit, we would recommend the deionization filter because it's really gonna help polish the water. So I get it. I think what you said was when it comes out of the RO unit, the membrane in the top, it's 92% purified, and then it gets purified even further to 99.9% of the DI? That's correct. Oh, awesome. And ultimately, you're going to want to be looking at your total dissolved solids. That's that's how you test to see if this is the unit is functioning well or if your filters need to be changed. You're going to want to test your incoming water supply and then your outgoing water supply and see what the difference is. If you get any readings above 10 parts per thousand of TDS on the back end of your filter, then you know it's probably time to change either your DI filter or your membrane. And then what? It, tell me about, this is the yellow line again, that is uh, the this waste? Is, this is your wastewater line. And one critical part of your wastewater line is this tiny little fitting in here, which is a flow restrictor. This actually puts back pressure on the unit and allows the membrane to function how it's supposed to. Without this fitting, you're not gonna get any product water. So if that fitting is not installed, too much water will flow through the, the, the discharge and not go through the membrane? That's correct. So even though I'm sending water down the drain, I'm not gonna collect much product water. That's correct. It needs that back pressure to function. So how do I know when to change the, the micron cartridge? The sediment filter is basically, the more stuff you have in your water, the dirtier it's gonna get. And so once you start to see this get built up with some brown kind of junky stuff, that means it's time to get changed. And then the carbon block? Same thing with this one. Uh, you should be getting about 2,000 gallons to go through this successfully and being able to pull a good amount of chlorine and, and toxins out of the water. But when it starts to look bad, it's time for a change. And then this is the membrane, correct? <laughs> That's correct. Your membrane uh, is gonna be needed to be changed, again, depending upon your incoming water supply, but you should be able to get at least a year's worth of usage out of your membrane, potentially a year's worth of usage out of your deionization cartridge. One good thing to note about a lot of deionization cartridges, some of them are that are available in the market are color changing. So this one happens to be kind of an orange color, so when it goes from orange to black, that means it's time to change. That's awesome. So let me take a, a shot at this. So if I wanted to change my micron cartridge, I'm gonna guess I just take and spin this uh, canister off. Yep. And I can pull my cartridge out and put the new one right back in, right? That's correct. And it looks like there's an O-ring in there. So if that, if this was, um, had been used, I should pull that out and lubricate that and put it back into place. It's always good to lubricate your O-rings. And then I'm gonna put my canister back on and, and I, I'm guessing the other two would be changed the same way. Yep. And then, and then this is the membrane, right? So take my uh, my experience with my own fish tank, I'm gonna guess that this is a quick disconnect. Yep, this right? is a Jayco disconnect, yep. So once I, uh, once I disconnect that, I can lift this right out of the clamp, clips, right? Spin the cover off, how am I doing, Sean? Doing great. And inside I'm gonna find um, the membrane, which typically is pretty, pretty tight, so a pair of pliers might help? Definitely. And then that's gonna pop right out, right? So then I can put the new one in that's afterwards. Correct. Yep. And should I just rinse that out? Yeah, if there's any debris that you uh, have in there, you might wanna rinse that out. And then again, another gasket. This is already lubricated because it's new. Well, that's pretty simple. Very easy to do. Um, again, about annual maintenance on something like that. And then that flow restrictor you were talking about, again, is back here, huh? So I can just Pop this line off, make sure that's in place. Yep. Back on. What is this right here? That's a check valve, and that prevents water from coming from your, your collection bin back into the unit. You just want to prevent that backflow. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think I'm ready to make salt water. Should be ready to go with a unit like this. Uh, you should be able to make an indefinite amount of supply of water. Um, thing is, most people probably don't need one of these. It's only when you get into larger tanks. Uh, if you just have a small 29, 30 gallon tank, uh, you may just want to come down to the store and buy some salt water because we have it already mixed up and ready to go for you. Ah, oh, sweet. Make my job easier. That's what we're here for. So visit us at uh, somethingfishingincorporated.com to get some more great tips and more videos. So when you are filtering your <laughs> So let's just start that one over again.